the sky this month with your host, Dave Redon. Welcome to The Sky This Month. I'm your host, Dave McDonald, and this is March 2024. And we have some really exciting news to talk about for the upcoming April 8th total solar eclipse. It's crossing America and will be featured here in New Hampshire as well. I have a very special guest, Dr. Rick Feinberg, and I want to read, I don't often read, but I want to read a little bit of his bio and then we'll introduce him to the show. So Dr. Rick Feinberg earned his PhD in astronomy at Harvard University. He spent 22 years at Sky and Telescope and eight of those years as editor-in-chief. And he was 12 years press officer at the American Astronomical Society, for which he now serves as the volunteer project manager of the AAS Solar Eclipse Task Force and as a volunteer, boy, he is busy. The International Astronomical Union named asteroid 9983 Rick Feinberg in his honor. And NASA awarded him its Exceptional Public Achievement Medal for his work in promoting eye safety for the 2017 United States Solar Eclipse. And Rick has been a guide on astronomy-themed expeditions, for more than three decades and has visited both the North Pole and the South Pole. And it's a pleasure to once again introduce Rick Feinberg. Thank you so much for being on our show. Thanks for having me back, Dave. You are welcome. And so uh, you can see behind us, I'm wearing my sweatshirt uh, featuring the eclipse. It's, uh, and we want to get right into it at the top of the show here. So Rick, tell us, what are the essential things to know about this upcoming April 8th eclipse. The single most important thing you need to know is that a total solar eclipse is the most spectacular celestial phenomenon that is available to us as humans. It's beyond belief. Um, there's no way to adequately describe it because it's not like anything else that people experience. Um, it is breathtakingly beautiful um, and there's no photo or video that can do it justice. And you're, and you're actually getting to see new moon, which normally is invisible to us, right? right? Uh, so in addition to the corona, you've got uh, hot pink solar prominences. There are jets of hot gas erupting off the limb of the sun. Uh, and they're just brilliant to look at. It's like a neon bulb. Uh, and you've got beautiful pastel sunrise sunset colors all the way around the horizon. Mm. It's just breathtakingly beautiful. Uh, these close-ups show kind of what you see if you're looking with binoculars, mm. um, which are a really useful tool to bring to a total solar eclipse. Uh, you can see some of the features I was describing there. What's really cool about a total solar eclipse is that the sun, the moon, and you are in a perfectly straight line, you know? Mm. Uh, and you're standing in the moon's dark inner shadow. It's called the umbra. Uh, and people who get hooked on this experience and travel all over the world to see total solar eclipses are often called umbraphiles. Really? Yeah, it's another term for an eclipse chaser. <laughs> in order to see a total solar eclipse, you have to be within the path of totality. Now, this is the path that the moon's shadow sweeps out across Earth's surface as it moves in its orbit. And ab about okay. how wide is that path? On April 8th, it'll be about 115 miles wide, so it's pretty okay. narrow. But it tracks thousands of miles across Earth's surface. And in, in this case, it enters North America at Mexico, mm -hmm. crosses Mexico, enters the U.S. at Texas, <laughs> and then it heads up to the northeast, touches the very northern tip of New Hampshire, where we are, and then into Maine and off into eastern Canada. So it's thousands of miles long, but it's only 115 miles wide. But the thing is, if you hear in the media that a total solar eclipse is coming to the United States, and it's going to touch 13 states, and they mention your state, you might think, oh boy, we're going to have a total solar eclipse. But only if you're within that path. And if you are not within that path, 
you're only going to have a partial solar eclipse. Michael Zeiler of Great American Eclipse created this map um, to indicate that uh, outside the path, uh, you know, it's, it's like close but no cigar, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you have to be in the path to get the total eclipse. So when this, the moon casts its shadow, it's casting the dark inner shadow within which the entire sun is blocked. And then on either side of it is the penumbra, which is the part of the shadow where the sun is partially blocked. Mm. And that's the region, it's much wider than the region of the total eclipse, um, where you see only a partial. Um, and this is uh, called the penumbra. Now, if you look at the next slide, this emphasizes uh, something that drives me crazy in the media. I keep seeing the phrase, uh, well, like what you just said, in Concord, we'll have a 96-ish percent total eclipse. No. Right. There's no such thing as a 96-ish percent total eclipse. It's a 96-ish percent partial eclipse. And here you see what a 50% eclipse looks like on the left and what a 99% eclipse looks like on the right. And I should mention, too, that these photographs were taken through solar filters, so the sky is black. This is what you see if you're looking through eclipse glasses or something. They let the sunlight through, but they don't let the skylight through. Right. Okay. But there is no such thing as any percent total eclipse except 100. Even when the moon is 99% eclipsed, as it will be very close to the path, a little bit north of Concord, but not far enough north to be in, in the path of totality, it only is about as dark as an overcast day. It's still daylight. Mm. It's darker than a sunny day, but it's still daylight, right. even at 99%. So eclipse chasers like to say that climate is what we expect, but weather is what we get on eclipse day. And this is important because, as you see from this map, some parts of the U.S. are much more likely to have clear skies in early April than other parts. The southwest, where you see the, the yellow-orange, that represents mostly clear skies, typically on an early April day. The northeast, on the other hand, not so great. Mostly cloudy skies in early April. But that's what you expect based on you know, the year-to-year -year statistics. Yeah, the averages. But this past year, we had a beautiful clear day on April 8th in New Hampshire. And in Texas, it was cloudy. Interesting. So, you know, climate is what you expect, weather's what you get. And part of the reason I like to emphasize that is that I don't want people to think, well, if I can't go to Texas, what's the point? It's more exciting to experience a total eclipse under cloudy skies than it is to see a partial eclipse under clear skies. Interesting. So if you can be in the path, even if the weather doesn't cooperate, mm. it's going to get dark in the middle of the day. It's going to get cold, or up in New Hampshire, colder. colder. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you will never forget the experience. Hopefully it'll be clear, but even if it isn't, mm -hmm. better to be in the path than to be out of the path. So next slide is meant to emphasize that it isn't the case that you either have a total eclipse or you have a partial eclipse. Because every total eclipse is preceded by partial phases, and then after totality there's more partial phases. Mm. It's just that if you're only going to get a partial eclipse, there is no totality. So it takes a little over an hour for the, part, for the moon to cover the sun completely, and then you get this rush of things happening over just a matter of seconds as the moon finally covers the sun. Then you get several minutes of totality. For this eclipse in April, if you're in southwest Texas, you'll get about four and a half minutes of totality. Same in Mexico. As the eclipse moves up into the northeast, the duration of totality decreases a bit. In northern New Hampshire, in Maine, it'll be about three and a quarter minutes. So the whole thing takes 
two and a half to three hours, but uh, it's the four, three to four minutes in the middle mm. where things are really exciting. And if you are not in the path, next slide, you miss that middle row. You don't see totality. You don't see the amazing rapid changes that occur right before and after it. You just get a partial eclipse. And, and I'd like to uh, maybe just put in a little bit of a uh, note that if at all possible, as we've been talking, to get up to Coas County above Lancaster, Milan, Kilkenny, and Berlin mm -hmm. uh, is where you want to go. But if you just can't, and I mean if you, if, if you just can't, the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center in Concord on April 8th will be having programming with eclipse glasses and solar telescopes and other activities. So it's a good place to go if you can't get up to uh, Coas County. But by all means, if you can make those plans, make them and go. You won't regret it. Do you know if they'll be uh, showing any live streams from elsewhere on the path? I would guess that uh, we will because yeah. th there'll be, you there, know, NASA there will be, be several. Involved. NASA, be several, that's right. right. The San Francisco Exploratorium, timeanddate.com. Sure, yeah. yeah. There'll be so, options. Yeah, but as I said at the, at the outset, um, I mean, a live stream may be the next best thing, but it doesn't look anything like right. <laughs> what you see with your eyes. And, it, and um, it's, it's 55 you know, years yeah. for the next one. Yeah. So don't just say, in, well, in New I'll Hampshire, you mean in, right. in New Hampshire. Yes. Right. However, right, 21 years for the next one in the United States. Well, there will be one in 2033. There will be an eclipse that touches Alaska. OK, uh, that's but, part but of the United That's States. pretty far away. Um, in the contiguous lower 48, uh, there will be an eclipse in 2044, but it only touches Montana and the Dakotas. Yeah. Um, but so the next really good one that crosses the whole country is in 2045. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, it's like a once in a generation thing. Don't miss this. One. Don't miss this one if you if you can help it. So, um, there has been a misunderstanding that, uh, and I saw this in 2017, that the closer you get to the path, the longer totality lasts. That's not quite right. There is no totality unless you're in the path, okay? Right. What's true is that the closer you are to the center of the path, the longer totality will last. But you don't have to be in the center of the path. And the center of the path in New England, it, it goes through Canada. It doesn't cross New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire is, uh, the Coas County is, in, is south of the center line, but it doesn't really matter because as this graph shows, you can, be, uh, you can be halfway from the e center to the edge, and you still are getting, um, you know, like more than 85% of mm -hmm. the duration of totality. All right, so the we'll go faster through the rest of these. The next slide shows how incredibly fast the bottom drops out of the sunlight right yeah. before totality. You know, it takes an hour to get as dark as an overcast day, and then in the last minute, it gets hundreds of times darker. Um, it's really dramatic. Uh, and the same thing, of course, happens again at the very end of totality. It's, it's, it's like the sun rose and jumped up into the sky in a minute. It's mm. just incredibly dramatic. So let's talk real quickly about safety. Uh, the next slide shows um, the full moon. Why do I show the full moon? Because the totally eclipsed sun is only about as bright as the full moon, which means it's perfectly safe to look at. So if you advance the slide, um, it's perfectly safe to look at the totally eclipsed sun without any eye protection. But at any other time, during the partial phases before and after totality, or if you're not in the path throughout the partial eclipse, you have to look through safe solar viewers. Uh, and if you uh, go to the next slide. I think I show some pictures of some. Yeah, uh, I actually brought some samples. Uh, these cardboard solar viewers are very popular. They're very inexpensive. If you wear glasses like I do, you just put them on over your glasses. Um, I can't see anything. Uh, well, I can kind of see these really bright spotlights very, very dimly. 
the only things that get through here are the, are, is the bright sun. And so you don't use these at totality. You'll miss it if you keep them on. But if you use these eclipse glasses d during the partial phases, you'll Can't be protected. Can't see a thing. No. Nope. Can't see a thing. They make them in plastic. They look like sunglasses, but they're a thousand times darker than ordinary sunglasses. They also make them in the form of these little handheld viewers. Uh, same kind of filter material. Uh, this is nice. You just keep it in your oh, pocket. That is convenient. All right. Sometimes. Uh, you can get them on a lanyard, and you just keep it around your neck. You watch the partial phases, and then as soon as totality hits, you just let go nice. and watch. Very nice. Now, it's very important that you not be looking into unfiltered optics, telescope, binoculars, camera lenses, through these. Uh, the concentrated sunlight will melt this filter instantly. Right. No, the only, if you're going to look or take pictures through a telescope or binoculars or a camera, you have to use a sol special purpose solar filter over the front. Right. And uh, that's important to have it over the front. It's got to be over the front. As you see that image, the wrong, unsafe on the left. Yeah. Binoculars, she's got her uh, solar eclipse glasses on, but they're at the yeah, back end of the Yeah, they're at the wrong end. <laughs> Not a good idea. On the right side, no solar eclipse glasses, solar filters over the front. Very important. Now, what if you can't find eclipse glasses or you forgot to bring them? There's other safe ways to look at a solar eclipse. The next slide shows a pinhole projection. Very simple. You just take a card, punch a hole in it. Um, what makes it safe is you've got the sun at your back, and the little, a little hole in the card projects an image of the sun, and you'll see the crescent sun during the partial phases. If you don't want to do it that way, anything with a lot of little holes in it will work. You've got a spaghetti colander there you got a slotted spoon. They will project pinhole images of the crescent sun during the partial phases, which is really cool. I heard that even Ritz crackers may work. Ritz, people bring Ritz crackers. <laughs> That's right. All kinds of fun things. Uh, next slide shows you don't even need equipment. You can just make little pinholes with your, with your fingers. A yeah. um, little animation on the left shows me doing that. There's the crescent suns on the ground. Nice. Even just standing near a leafy tree. Yep. Uh, now, the, the trees won't have leafed out yet no, in April. No, they won't. Not up in Los uh, County. So <laughs> that might not work so well uh, for us up here in the Northeast. But you get the picture. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind is that if you are using pinhole projection and you've got the sun at your back, as soon as the image goes away because it got dark, you turn around and look up. Okay? You can't use pinhole projection for totality. It, there's not enough light to get through the pinhole. Right. And anyway, you don't need to. You can look at it directly. Um, the other thing is, uh, next slide, and we're almost done, uh, is that you'll often hear that solar eclipses are rare. Uh, and that's not true. There's a solar eclipse somewhere on the planet at least twice a year. Right. And there's a total solar eclipse somewhere on the planet, typically once a year or once every other year. The problem is that, that, that somewhere on the planet is usually on the other side of the planet. Right. You know, so you're going to have to you know, take an international trip or something, and it's expensive and time consuming. What's rare is for a total solar eclipse to come to you. If you were to just park yourself somewhere, even in Coas County, and wait for a solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse, you, you, on average, you're going to have to wait three or 400 years. Hmm. You know? Coas County is getting one now, but it won't get another one, I'm not sure for how long. I know New Hampshire itself doesn't get another one for like 55 years, right? Correct, yeah. Um, so it's, it's not a once in, total solar eclipses aren't a once in a lifetime thing unless you're waiting for it to come to you. Right. And coming to you is anywhere close enough to get to easily, yes. right? Uh, it doesn't have to go over your house. But for 31 million people on April 8th, it does go over their house. And the final, my final really essential point uh, concerns traffic. Final slide. If you're going to get into the path of totality, get there early, stay put, and stay late. Stick around. Because what happened in 2017 is as soon as totality ended, most of the millions of people who went to see it, jumped in their cars, and hit the road. 
and the traffic jams were historic. Yes. Uh, it took an hour to get to the eclipse and 12 hours to get back in yep. Oregon. It was horrific. So if you keep all of that in mind, you're pretty well prepared for the eclipse. You want more information? Next slide. The website that's maintained by the Solar Eclipse Task Force at the American Astronomical Society is a really good starting place because it's got all the safety information you need and it links out to eclipse maps and educational resources and images and all kinds of things. Um, so that's where you should go, eclipse.aas.org. Nice. Great information. And as uh, we said, if you haven't gotten the idea yet, don't miss it. If at all possible, get up there and enjoy totality. It's worth the trouble of it's inconvenience. Trouble. You know, camp out in the snow, bring your tent, a sleeping bag, <laughs> whatever. It, it will be so, so worth it. If you get into the path of totality on April 8th, no matter the weather, no matter how much trouble it is to do it, you will not regret it. You will definitely feel it was worth it. Absolutely. Well, Rick, thanks so much for being part of our show again and for the great information that you shared about the eclipse and the importance of it. And again, the encouragement of people to go and experience it because it, it's an experience. And you're going to be in Coas County? That's my plan. Got my reservations, made them about a year ago. All right. Well, I wish for you clear skies, and, oh, I, and okay. I wish That's for me clear skies. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going to Mexico. Good um, for you. But, you know, I hope that, I, that my reward for going that far is clear skies. It should be. We're hoping. It should be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. And we'll take a look at uh, some things that you can see in the night sky from your backyard this month. Hope you enjoyed that time with uh, Dr. Rick Feinberg, an amazing man with an incredible knowledge base. And I hope that you get to enjoy totality somewhere. Well, it's March, and March means spring is coming, and it means the vernal equinox. And this is your opportunity to balance your eggs. So check out this student of mine with a nice egg balanced on the floor. And you can do this on March 19th. So get your eggs ready. Find a nice flat surface. No cheating with grains of salt or cracks or things. On a nice flat counter or the floor, a flat floor may work the best. Balance your eggs. Send your pictures to me. You'll see my email address in uh, a little bit. So send your pictures of your balanced eggs to me, Dave McDonald. March 19th, the sun will be crossing the equator at 11.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Because we turn our clocks back, don't forget that. Uh, it's second Sunday in March. So, the stars are out, of course, and you remember famous Orion here. We talked about Orion quite a bit last month. And uh, Betelgeuse, the red star. Rigel, the blue-white star. The brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, right here. And you'll notice that this is the sky of March 19th. I thought that would be appropriate. And this is about 9 o'clock at night, facing south. You see the moon, and it looks like the moon is full, but it's not. The moon is pretty much around a quarter of a phase moon. It, it just shows up look, looking like it's full, but it's not. Castor and Pollux, the twin stars are here, but now ushering in spring is the lion. And so these stars here, the backward sickle of Leo the lion, this triangle represents the hind haunches and the tail. So if we bring up the artwork, it'll make a little more sense. So you can see the lion here. And then between the twins, Castor and Pollux of the stars, is Cancer the Crab. And that's where the moon is going to be in Cancer the Crab on March 19th. Now, 
the moon moves each night from west to east. So the next night, it's going to be ma making its way towards the mouth of uh, the lion, March 20th and then 21st. You know. And then next slide, just to get rid of some of the artwork and such, and the, the connect the lines sometimes makes sense. And so again, Orion the hunter is here. You've got your twin stars, Castor and Pollux, Procyon the little dog star, the big dog, uh, Sirius. But again, pointing out that the moon is in Cancer on the 19th, but you see this kind of upside down Y. The stars of Cancer are fairly dim, but findable. And then we have ushering in spring is Regulus the lion. Regulus represents the heart of the lion. That's the name of the star, the heart of the lion. The backwards question mark is the head, and you have the body. And again, the hind haunches and the tail of the star's name is Denobla for the tail of the lion. So there's some things that you can go out and enjoy. And next slide, again, we just take all the lines away, but the stars are in the same place. Notice, again, try to find that backwards sickle, or I should say the backwards question mark, the sickle of Leo, and the tail and part of the lion. That's kind of your next job to do. Then, on March 24th, we, you have the opportunity to look for Mercury in the evening sky, and it's good a few days before the 24th, a few days after. I chose the 24th of March, and if you look here, you'll see that Mercury is close to the horizon. The sky's pretty bright. This is 7.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, March 24th, and this is going to be a great opportunity a couple days before, a couple days after, to locate the planet Mercury. Notice it's in the glare of the sun. Binoculars will be helpful, but see if you can find Mercury. And you won't be able to miss blazing Jupiter uh, above it. That'll be the brightest object in the sky uh, unless the moon is out, which it's not at this particular time. So to wrap up the show, I my astronomy club and our graphic arts department class at Belmont High School put this eclipse video together. It's less than four minutes and you're going to uh, enjoy it. And uh, we'll sign off with this eclipse video. Yo, Brendan, did you hear what's happening? No. What? Colin, did you hear what's happening? No, what? Hey, Rick, you know what's happening? No, what? Yo, Lucas, did you hear what's happening? No, what? What's, what's happening? A total solar eclipse is coming to New Hampshire. What? What's a total solar eclipse? Well, you see, it works like this. When the moon orbits Earth and comes directly between both the sun and Earth, it casts a small shadow on a narrow part of Earth, creating the solar eclipse. Well, what would it look like? Our advisor went to the 2017 total solar eclipse in Kentucky and took these pictures. Pretty cool, right? Wow, you're kidding. Yeah, and the stars and the planets came out. And even the animals were confused. He told us about how absolutely eerie and dark it was there. Where can I go to see it? To see totality, you have to be mid to northern Coas County in New Hampshire. Where is that? What's happening here in Coas County, New Hampshire? It's way up north. You want to be north of the towns of Lancaster, Kilkenny, and Milan. The farther north you go, the better. You definitely want to be in the path of totality. 99% coverage just isn't good enough. When is it? April 8th. It's a Monday, but if you don't already live up there, you'll have to get up there early, like Saturday or Sunday. Why? The traffic. Nothing will be moving. And you likely won't get back till Tuesday. It's a big deal that people are coming from all over to view the eclipse in New Hampshire and other parts of northern New England and Canada. Maybe I'll just see the next one. 
The next time one of these is going to happen is on May 1st of 2079, and that's 55 years away. High likelihood we're not going to be able to see that, but maybe your kids will. Wow, can I just look up at the sun? No, no, no. Never look at the sun without proper eye protection, like these eclipse glasses I just got. Will I be able to see the sun? Yes, safely, and you might even see sunspots. During totality, you can take your glasses off, but as soon as that ends, put them right back on. How long is that? About three minutes, but it's so worth seeing. You'll be able to see the corona, which you can't see at any other time. 100% totality starts at 3.30 p.m., but you're gonna to wanna to start watching it around two, and it'll go until about 5 p.m. You guys are never going to forget this experience, ever. High school and middle school students should consider making a science project out of it, if their teacher agrees. It happens Monday, April 8th. Totality is in Coas County. Don't you miss it. Hope you enjoyed that video. The kids did a great job with it. I'm Dave McDonald for The Sky This Month.